It's not often we get a new Lancia in CDT. In fact, in the entire history of CDT, we've gotten two. My favourite car in the world, the Delta, if you couldn't tell from my intro. And, um, well, this, the brand new Lancia HF Stratos, the rally car. Yeah, Lancia have a history of making rally cars. There's the Delta. Well, in fact, they've got a big three rally car set. They've got the Stratos, the brilliant 037, and my Delta, the one I love. The Stratos was originally designed by Marcello. Oh. I was going to say he was called Gandhi, but I'm confusing him with the other guy. Anyway, um, this was the guy that designed the Lamborghini Countach. And also, the Stratos Zero. This is the HF Stratos. It's a production car. Very rare, very valuable, wedge-shaped, proper 70s car. But the Stratos Zero is another wedge-shaped 70s supercar with, well, basically a big door on the front. The only way to get in was like in a BMW Isetta. Big door on the front. Anyway, that got scrapped, but they did end up making the Stratos into a real production car in the form of this. I think there's 500 of these. Just enough for it to be homologated for rallying. As you can tell by the rally lights and, well, short wheelbase. But this is a 70s rally car. And why are 70s rally cars so, um, special? Because they were the last rally cars to be not four-wheel drive. This is a rear-wheel drive car designed to go off-road. Making it scary, to say the least. The engine in this is basically... I think it's the engine from a Ferrari 246D now. And they were apparently quite unreliable. Hot fuel often got spat from the carburetor onto the engine which caused fires so it spat a lot and every so often caught fire another problem another car that had that problem is the Lamborghini Countach um but the worst thing about the Stratos is the pedals well just the driving position in general it's very cramped inside the cockpit I'm told and the pedals are sort of not on the side of the car that you expect them to be. And I'm not talking about left-hand drive, right-hand drive. The pedals are almost central. They are very shifted towards the centre. Meaning that apparently this car isn't a fun driving experience, which is a shame, because it's a very short wheelbase. You know, it's absolutely tiny in general, this car. Very powerful rear-wheel drive car, which means it should be fun and quite leery. This is also helped by the fact it's very light. I think it's 1,200 kilograms. So, about the, less than the Focus RS I was reviewing the other day. Performance. It's alright. Not too special. It's well, how, how do I describe this? It's sort of a straight downhill line if it was on a graph. Starts off, you know, quite quick, 0 to 60. And then it gets slower and slower in acceleration. And I not and I don't mean like a normal car. I mean exponentially slower. Until it becomes near the top end relatively revuelto ish. It's got some of the symptoms of Rivuelto syndrome, but I prefer this over the Rivuelto because it's actually quite exciting. And this is most apparent in twisty roads like this. These are relatively wide, but it corners very well. You can hit apexes so easily in this. You feel like you're on the limit a lot, but that's exciting. This is an exciting car. I am having fun in it. And fun is something I look for most in a car. I've just realised I'm doing this on stock tyres. Imagine what this is going to be like on slicks. 
Right, come on, more power. Look at it, turning in. Perfectly fine. Even. Look, even as quick as I'm going now. It's such a fun car. I'm having an absolute ball in this. Honestly, I am very happy because, well, I really like the Stratos in real life and I was hoping they wouldn't muck it up in CDT. And judging from the cornering ability, they haven't. Thank goodness. And like a rally car, it can slide. Most rally cars are built with the with sliding in mind because in rally driving the fastest way through a corner is sideways because it's on a loose surface, not much grip, so driving it like a tarmac car doesn't work. You gotta slide it. I have mucked it up though because I can't slide particularly well. But look, even I Okay, yes, there is a little bit of penduluming going on. The Stratos is, well, because it, the wheelbase is so short, it's neither mid-engine nor rear-engined. Because the engine's too far back to be mid-engined, but too far forwards to be rear-engined. But either way, it certainly feels like a rear-engined car. Snap oversteer. Well, it's not as bad as in an MR2 or an old 911, but it's there. It's noticeable as well. And you know something? I'm pretty sure that's how it drives in real life. So, points for accuracy. And points off for my own skill issue. There was a plan to bring the Stratos into the modern world. Around the late 2000s, someone took the body and wheels off of a Ferrari 430 and replaced them with Stratos-esque body and, body and wheels. Plan to go into production as a limited run of 500 looked absolutely stunning. I had such high hopes for this car. I didn't, I wasn't conscious yet. Never made it into production. Such a shame we lost a car like that. Ooh, I've just realised how bright the lights are. I think these lights are brighter than normal. Because Stratos has got so much more lights, thanks to Rally Spotlights. Right, here we go. Through the corners. One thing I am noticing on the track, the gear ratios are wrong. Honestly, I would rather the third be longer and fourth be shorter. Doesn't feel right. Break here. Great brakes on this thing. They are fully upgraded, but they are still really good. Flat through here lift right up to the top of the banking full power forty one point five for a class two car hundred and thirty nine so this is bottom of class two and three and it is a forty one five really good car but best about these cars is that there's a little trick you can do which is most easily done by fiddling with the suspension. So, offset maximum, offset maximum, height maximum. Now, this may seem ludicrous, but watch this. See? I have now successfully flipped my Lancia the wrong way up and I'm now driving it upside down. The Lancia basically has no collision which means you can do some very weird things when it's the right way up. Oh and it's best driven going backwards. Bit uncontrollable but good fun. So on that Australian bombshell. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I am going to go and have some good fun with the upside down Stratos now. What a silly car.